From age, Lucy was obsessed by trains. She would spend hours a day in the big grass fields next to her mom's work for her favorite train to pass by. Alicia, her mom, didn't seem to understand why but was happy that Lucy had something to keep herself busy. Years later, however, she wished she never let Lucy alone in the grass fields. How could she have been so blind? How could she have let her daughter spend hours on end standing in an open field waiting for some stupid trains to come by? She couldn't believe Lucy was gone. Alicia looked for her daughter everywhere, but she was nowhere to be found. When Alicia got called by Lucy's principal saying she didn't arrive at school, she immediately knew something was wrong. Lucy was the most punctual girl in school. She would never skip a class or be late. Alicia's voice was trembling as she was on the verge of breaking down. Where could Lucy be? Close to Alicia's work, police officers saw Lucy's bike lying on the ground, but Lucy was nowhere to be found. This exact spot, though, was very, very familiar to Alicia. Lucy had been here many times when she would join her mom at her work when she was little. This couldn't just be a coincidence. The officers told Alicia what they had found and this shocked Alicia instantly. Alicia couldn't help but break down and cry. She knew exactly what had happened and blamed herself for everything. How could she have been so stupid? Where had Lucy gone and what mistake did Alicia make to lead this all? Lucy, get ready, we need to leave. Alicia shouted from downstairs. Lucy would join her mom at work every day and get homeschooled in the evening. When Alicia decided that she would raise her daughter in her fashion, she was worried she would miss people her age to play with. That wasn't the case, however, as Lucy was totally obsessed with something different. It, of course, wasn't usual for a young child to grow up without anyone of their age around. However, Lucy didn't seem to bother. She actually seemed perfectly fine with how things were going. Just like every other day, Alicia and Lucy arrived at Alicia's work. Lucy would sprint right outside and spend her day frolicking around the big grass fields next to her mom's office. In the beginning, Alicia was a bit anxious about leaving her completely alone there, but at the end of every day, she would come back inside again. Till that day, that is. Lucy never really got in trouble or did anything that made Alicia worry. She was a very easygoing child who was perfectly fine with playing alone. That isn't strange though when realizing she didn't have friends to play with. At the end of every day, Alicia would walk up to the side door of her office and call for Lucy to come in. Normally, she would come sprinting in and get ready to go back home. However, today she didn't. Furthermore, she was nowhere to be found. The big fields were completely empty. Panic started to take over Alicia completely. Alicia stood in complete shock looking in the distance. She couldn't be anywhere at this point. She had been away for hours. Alicia started to doubt her parenting skills for leaving her daughter alone for hours on end. Finally, she snapped out of this state and took action. Alicia ran outside at the side of the empty field and shouted Lucy's name as loud as she could. Minutes went by and there was no reply. Just when Alicia was thinking about giving up and calling up the police, she spotted something in the distance. Could it be Lucy? Alicia kept running and running, but the distance to the figure and the distance don't seem to get any smaller. The distance seems like miles away, but Alicia was determined to find her daughter. After minutes of running, she finally came closer. All the way at the end of the grass field was a small figure wearing a bright yellow coat, just like Lucy wore. Alicia made her way over to the figure as fast as she could and was relieved when she saw it was Lucy. Every emotion thinkable rushed through Alicia's body at that point. Naturally, she was extremely relieved, but she didn't know if she should cry or scream. She had never felt a rush of emotion like this before. However, she knew she had to give her daughter the right punishment. You can never wander off like this again, Lucy. Alicia told her daughter in an angry tone. Lucy started to cry, not realizing she had done anything wrong. Eventually, Alicia was just relieved that all this was over, but she didn't realize that this wasn't the end of it. It wasn't just not the end, it was far from the end. Lucy inherited an incredible stubbornness from her mother and was determined to find what she wanted to find. Everything seemed to be fine for now, but things would completely change later on. That evening, Alicia asked Lucy what even she was doing in the fields. Lucy explained to her mom that there is this one train who would come by every day and the train driver would wave at her when he drove past. Doing this daily had become an addiction and she wanted to see where the train would go. Normally, she wouldn't just stand there and wave for some reason, but she couldn't explain today she felt the urge to see where the train was going, who was driving the train and what it was doing there. That day, something changed. 
Lucy ran fast as she could, hoping to see where the train went, but her little legs stood no chance against the big machine. Lucy still seemed a bit sad about it. Being as curious as she is, she really wanted to know everything about the train. Alicia was determined to make the stop. She knew that this would happen again if she wouldn't change something. It's incredible that such a little girl had such a strong will. Alicia kept thinking about what to do when finally the solution became clear to her. At this point, Alicia understood Lucy should have some distraction from the train and decided to send her to a local school. Sure, she could play with kids her age and it would also give Alicia herself some rest after working the whole day. When she told her daughter, Lucy didn't know how to feel about it. On one hand, she was happy to meet kids of her own age and maybe even make friends. On the other hand, this would kill her obsession with the train. She didn't have a choice, though. The next week, she sat in a classroom at the local school. Initially, everything went well. Lucy would play and make friends. Her teachers described her as a true angel and she was getting excellent grades. The only thing that he noticed is that every once in a while, she seemed to be distracted and would doze off in her thoughts. It seemed like she was daydreaming sometimes. Every so often, she would be completely sunk in thoughts. For a girl her age, this wasn't out of the ordinary. But when something shocking happened, they'd wish they'd seen this as a sign before. It was a normal morning. Alicia would wake up Lucy and she would get ready for school. After having breakfast, she would grab her bicycle and made her way to the school. Nothing seemed to be wrong, but when Alicia arrived at work, she received a strange phone call. The only people that would normally call Alicia was her mother and those annoying marketeers who wanted to sell subscriptions. She decided not to pick them up. However, every time she hung up the call, the same number would call back again and again and again. Alicia didn't recognize the number, but when she finally decided to pick up, she was greeted by the principal of Lucy's school. Lucy hadn't arrived at school and she was checking in to see if she was home ill. With a big tremble in her voice, Alicia said no and stress filled her body. Alicia asked the principal if he could check again and make sure she was there. Maybe she was at the toilet, or had they overlooked her? When well, the principal told Alicia that she was sure that she wasn't there, she felt a rush of bad emotions, like she had weeks ago again. At that moment, Alicia felt that the ground was disappearing beneath her feet. Alicia knew she had to call the police and tell them that her daughter was missing. At the first, the officer on the line didn't take Alicia completely serious. It was standard procedure to file a missing person's report after 24 hours of going missing. However, when he heard all the emotions and stress in Alicia's voice, he made sure he'd send a team to her. More than minutes, two patrol officers arrived at Alicia's work and told Alicia that they would do anything in their power to help Alicia. When Alicia calmed down a little, she told the officers everything they needed to know and gave them a description of what she was wearing. The officers knew this would be a hard task. They had close to zero leads at this point. Not being sure of how to handle this situation, they did assure Alicia that they would do anything to get to the bottom of this. They wouldn't leave a stone unturned. The officers weren't sure where to start searching, but decided to go look close to the school first. However, when they turned to the corner at Alicia's work, they spotted something strange. It kind of looked like a bike that Alicia had described to them. Still being close to Alicia's office, they picked up the bike and brought it back to Alicia to see if it was Lucy's. The officers thought it wouldn't be as it was pretty roughed up and covered in mud, but it still was worth the shot. When they arrived back at the office and asked Alicia to come outside, she immediately started crying upon seeing the bike. It was Lucy's. Lucy would often ride through the woods and jump with the bike. This was the reason it didn't look like a typical bike of a girl of her age. This must mean that Lucy is close by. The officers decided to call for backup and decided to split up and roam the area. In a best case scenario, she still was in the neighborhood. Not even an hour later, there was a big surge team roaming the area. The teams would split up and each team would go in a different direction. Initially, none of the teams found anything. They had a search in a dense forest and nothing they had found had anything to do with Lucy. They knew they would have to try hard. The officers were on the brink of calling it a day when one of the officers saw something lying on the ground. At first, he thought it didn't have anything to do with Lucy, but after close inspection, he was sure it was hers. The officer immediately called for backup over the walkie-talkie. There was a small little scarf lying on the ground close to the rail tracks. Lucy's name was engraved with the scarf. There was no way that this scarf belonged to a different Lucy. However, even at this point, the officer still had many different directions it could go. They could follow the rail tracks to either the north or the south, or they could cross the railroad and go deeper into the forest. They decided splitting up would be the smartest decision. At this point, having searched for well over six hours, it started getting dark. The officers knew they had no chance of finding the little girl in the dark. They had to either find her now or start looking again the next day. 
Thinking logically, there was only one decision to be made. Follow the railroad. The officers walked and walked but didn't see anything suspicious. Mile after mile, they walked until they reached a bend in the railroad. They couldn't believe what they saw around the bend. None of the officers saw something like this before. What they saw was way bigger than it normally was and what they were used to being. They couldn't believe their eyes, but they knew they had no choice but to get closer. After the bend at the distance was a big classical train standing still. When they approached the train, they saw a man talking to someone. It turned out to be the train driver and little Lucy. The train driver completely stopped the train when he saw Lucy alone at the train tracks. The driver explained how he had seen Lucy before when they would wave at each other but a few weeks ago this stopped. He had been accompanying Lucy for hours now. He tried to call the police multiple times but failed to get any reception in the dense area. The officers thanked the train driver and took Lucy with them. It turned out that Lucy had never forgotten about the train or the train driver she always used to wave at. Not being able to do that anymore left an empty feeling with the little girl. Lucy's mother was ecstatic to see her daughter again and they came up with a plan to make sure this would never happen again. It was clear that Lucy wouldn't just get rid of her obsession and it would be better to embrace it than to force it away. The train took a very important place in little Lucy's life and Alicia couldn't bear the sight of Lucy being peevish. The train driver drove a train meant for exhibition. Every weekend, Lucy and Alicia would join the train driver on the train for a few hours so Lucy would still be able to see the train and its driver. This went on for a few years until the train driver retired. However, at this point, Lucy was old enough to let loose of her obsession. Years went by with Lucy not thinking about the train anymore. What she didn't know is that, even though that she thought that the trains weren't important to her anymore, it would still take up a big part of her life. When Lucy was about 25, she applied for her first grown-up job as, yes, you guessed it, a train driver. 